Greetings loved ones and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another I Love This Stuff with Megan Hughes. I'm Megan Hughes and this is the series where I show you everything I have been loving over the course of the past, let's say in this one, few months. This is going to be everything I have loved over 2022 so far. My voice just cracked. I'm feeling like a prepubescent boy. I'm also, I have a sinus infection right now. If you do hear my voice do anything weird, I have a very swollen lymph node over here. So I'm drinking a cleaver cold infusion and just slowly but surely waiting for all of this to go away. But all of that aside, I'm still here for you today. And I wanna get into the first category of this video, which is bathroom goodies. So I only have two bathroom goodies to show in this I Love This Stuff today, and they are both from Bite. So I'm gonna start off with their whitening gel. They have a little whitening gel that comes in a tiny glass bottle, and you just use this little like wooden paint brush, kind of, and just smile and paint it on your teeth. And then you wait 30 seconds and you just smile like this, and then you rinse it all off. And I've been using this over the course of the past few weeks because I'm getting married at the beginning of June, and I want my pearly whites to be shining, you know? And Bite is sustainable, they're iconic, I love them, I use their toothpaste bits, I use their wooden toothbrush, and I also now use their lotion bar. So they're like kind of venturing out of just dental care and also getting into skincare. So they just released this lotion bar that's like refill like you would refill a deodorant or something like that. And it's kind of like a little push pop situation and I already used it today, but I'm gonna use it again. I've just been using it for a little extra moisturizing, you know, on my cheeks and on my forehead because I especially get dry around here. And the weather here has been fluctuating so much. It has snowed three times this week and it's mid April, like what is going on? And also I wanted to say I rarely venture out of my skincare routine cause I'm just so obsessed with it but this has been really, really nice for my skin, so I wanted to share. I always have a code for them linked in the description box of my videos if you're curious about any of their products. And I also wanted to ask you guys, speaking of like skin and venturing out of routines and stuff like that, I have not been wearing makeup for three years. I haven't done a full face of makeup or even used any of my makeup products since I filmed a video recreating an old makeup look that I used to do all the time in high school with like the winged liner and stuff. In 2019 and that was the last time I even like touched my makeup bag so that being said I'm doing my makeup for my wedding and I don't want to use all like crusty musty gross products that have just been sitting for three years and drying up and so this is a call to action for the comments section please let me know your favorite like sustainable refillable vegan cruelty free kind of products for makeup because I don't even know what I want to use but I do know the kind of like natural look I want to go for but just don't have any of the products yet. So that's my call to action. My next thing is getting into bedroom goodies. And I don't mean that to be sensual. I'm just saying like what I use for sleepy time and stuff like that. And most of the time I won't feature like supplements or stuff like that because I don't want you guys to be like, oh my God, Megan told me to use it. So I'm just gonna like buy it, you know? I'm only talking about this because I was recommended this from my medical professional and it has helped me a lot. So I went to the gynecologist recently for an annual exam. It had been a while, you know, I was avoiding it because of all of my horrible gynecologist experiences, but this one was actually fantastic. And I wanted to just briefly touch on that and say that I recommend going to a midwife if you are scared about going back to the gynecologist because midwives in my experience here in Oregon have been so nice to me and very like nurturing. And so she was like, I'm gonna ask you about everything today from your health workouts to your sleep. And when she asked me about my sleep, she's like, so how are you sleeping? And I was like, um, I don't know. I think it's just cause I'm stressed out, but like, I just have a lot going on. And and every night when I go to bed, it takes me like two hours to fall asleep from when my head hits the pillow until I'm actually in my sleep cycle. And my thoughts are just going a mile a minute with everything that like I didn't get done that day and that I have to do tomorrow. And it's just like endless chatter. And she was like, have you ever tried L-theanine? And I told her, yeah, I used to take L-theanine capsules for my anxiety. And she was like, have you ever tried 
sun theanine for mental calmness and relaxation. These are 100 milligram chewable tablets, but I kind of like suck on them, I guess. And they kind of taste just like fruity and nice and fun. And she told me that these are better than like the capsules that you just swallow because the L-theanine will break down and get into your system better when it gets released through your salivary glands. So I just kind of like suck on it before bed and just like read my book and decompress and put on my little high frequency see music and this has actually changed my life I'm not even trying to be dramatic I can fall asleep in like 30 minutes now like I'm not doing any tossing and turning there's not any wheels turning up here for hours at a time since I started using these and it's been like two weeks so if you have the same problem as me I recommend talking to your medical professional about these and then you know maybe getting some for yourself because I honestly thought that that was like a hereditary thing because both of my parents have like sleep problems and have talked to me about them in the past and I was like this is just my life and you know when you just like accept a part of your life like that and then you talk to somebody and they're like no that's not normal. I always wondered why Finley could fall asleep in like five minutes and not me, but not anymore, okay? I'm on the same wave now. And speaking of things that help me fall asleep, the next thing I have been loving is my Brooklinen sheets. We have the Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle on our bed as we speak, and they're just truly chef's kiss. Brooklinen, who is kindly sponsoring this video, makes high quality bed sheets at an affordable price. Luxury sheets typically cost around $500, but Brooklinen's Classic and Lux Hardcore bundles cost between $200 to $250, depending on your bed size. I chose Brooklinen not just for the price, but also for the reviews. They were the most recommended brand that you all sent in on my Instagram, and they have over 100,000 five-star reviews. Insane. Instead of buying these items individually, you can do what we did and save 25% by purchasing a hardcore bundle from the comfort of your own home. This includes the core sheet set, extra pillowcases, and a duvet cover. You can also mix and match the color options. All the colors and styles go super well together, so there is something for everyone. The Lux Satin Sheets are the ultimate bedding upgrade, okay? With a 480 thread count and a slightly luminous finish, they are giving luxury hotel at home. They are truly so soft, and Finley and I both can't recommend them enough. Brooklyn is offering my viewers $20 off any order over $100, so if you want to get some for yourself, just click the link below and enter code MeganH at checkout. Thanks, Brooklyn. And my next bedroom goodie that I've been loving is a candle company, and I'm actually burning one of their candles behind me over here right now. That's the Baja Cactus scent, I believe, but this company, Lit & Co. Candles, I can't be tamed. I can't be tamed with them. My sister introduced me to these candles. This one I'm showing you is the tobacco scent, but I think my favorite one so far that I've tried is the Plumeria for spring. It can't get better. I mean, seriously, it just can't. They are soy-free candles made in Boise, Idaho, but they also have an online store where they ship to you. So I've been ordering a lot of them and they just had a sale. I think it was for like an eight year anniversary or something like that, where they did eight candles for $88 and I did it. I did do it. So did Lindsay. And we were both like, should we do it? It's a lot of candles, but we can like stockpile. And that's just what I've been doing. I have one in like every room of my house now and I'm just in a candle phase, okay? I'm back in a candle phase. I'm candle crazy. It's okay. We love supporting small businesses here. So if you are looking for new candles and you want to try them out, I'll link them down below just like everything in this video. Now, let's move on to kitchen goodies. So I have a couple of things to show you today, but they're just drinks. I've become just a drinky girl, okay? I just love a good drink. Not even alcoholic drinks. I've just been drinking and a lot of juice and a lot of kombucha. So the juice I've been loving is this one. Somebody replied back to my Instagram story when I put this on my story, that's how much I've been loving it. And they were like, I think that this is just an Oregon thing because I've never seen it anywhere else. So if you live somewhere outside of Oregon and you have this at your store, please let me know because currently it is sold out at any store I have gone to. And I'm hesitant to even show this to you because I don't want it to be sold off the shelves. I'm just kidding. I don't think that enough people are gonna see this to where they would put a stop in the supply chain. But this is mango nectar juice. It is mango puree blended with apple juice and it's just so good. Ugh. I'm just savoring my last sips of this because my grocery store doesn't have it anymore. Live reaction to me drinking juice. It just hits the spot every time. Mm. I think what I love about this so much is that it's kind of like thick. It's not very like thin and you know not flavorful. Like the flavor is packed. 
okay, in this bad boy. And I just love it so much. Open Nature did it again. That Black Eyed Peas song, I Just Can't Get Enough, is about me in this juice, okay? We're in a love affair, it's true. Please try it if you ever see it at a store. Need to get the last little drop. Mm. Just love it. I go janky for juice. I should have made that the title of this video. Anyways, I've also been drinking a lot of kombucha. And I've talked about this before, I feel like, in vlogs, because both of my best friends here in Oregon work for GT's Kombucha. It's the Synergy brand. And I kid you not, there is not a better kombucha company than this. I'm not even just being dramatic. It's fizzing a lot because it's alive with probiotics. But really, I've tried a couple of other kombucha brands out here, and they do not even compare to GT's, okay? My favorite thing about this kombucha is that it's actually helped me significantly with my burping problem, which if you guys have been watching me for a very long time, you know that belching is just like part of my life. And honestly, belching has become such a small part of my life now that I drink this like at least once a week. My favorite flavors are probably Watermelon Wonder, which I have right here. She's just incredible. I also love Mystic Mango because I'm obsessed with mango. And they also have a peach flavor that's coming out out either now or this summer. Either way, yes, I started drinking it more because my friends both work for the company, but also I kept drinking it because it's f***ing incredible and I don't even get them for free. I just buy them myself. I'm obsessed. Okay, now for everything I have been reading in 2022. So my two favorite books this year have been Wild by Cheryl Strayed, which I don't have right now. I literally don't know where I put it. It must be under a pile of books somewhere because I could not find it handheld to show you in this video. So I'm just gonna put it on the screen, okay? This is a book about Cheryl Strayed walking the Pacific Crest Trail from California to Oregon. This woman walked alone. She talked about all of her struggles from getting to the trail and finishing the trail and her reflections and all of the people she met along the way. And it was really, really great to hear about like Oregon and her time there walking on the trail through the logging territory because that is just a really harsh part of living in Oregon. And like, while we love paper products, products, wood, we love their work. It's also really sad to see clear cutting. So those were some of my favorite parts of the book when she talked about all of that. I also loved when she talked about addiction and grief and her struggles in relationships and all these types of things. It just covered so many different categories other than just, I'm a solo woman hiking, you know? Like that was the premise of the book, but it wasn't the major themes. And I just found it to be so invigorating. Like when I finished it, I was like, I can do anything. And I was just so excited about life and I finished it the day before my 25th birthday and it honestly like kind of gave me a little bit of an omen like you can do whatever you want to do no matter your age no matter if you do it alone you don't need to ask anybody's permission to go ahead and do something like you can just go and freaking do it okay so that book really lit up my life I loved it so I highly recommend I talked about it in my 25 lessons I learned at 25 video but um, if you happen to have missed that one then I'm recommending it to you again here. <laughs> also, my second favorite book of this year was The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. I read this in 2019, but I reread it at the beginning of this year, and I just love Jandy Nelson. She is one of the best authors of all time, in my humble opinion. And she kind of writes like YA romance stories, but they have a huge emphasis on imagery and just like setting the scene. All of her books are based in Northern California and around the Redwoods and just like those types of landscapes just make my heart so happy. So I love hearing her write about that stuff and she really just like puts you there. And this book also talked about grief so much in just such like a beautifully put way that it shook me to my goddamn core. Do you see how many pages I have dog-eared in this? Because it's disturbing. I underlined so much. Like just picture this, okay? The enormous willow tree that reigns like a queen over the yard. The thick drapes of leaves falling like a shimmering green ball gown around the ancient trunk and branches, creating the perfect skulk den. I wanna be under that tree, okay? I wanna be anywhere that Jandy writes about. And rumor has it, she's writing her third book right now, I believe, and I just can't freaking wait. I keep rereading The Sky Is Everywhere and I'll Give You The Sun, which are my two favorite books like of all time. And I just love Jandy's work. She's just incredible. If you've never read a Jandy Nelson book, please pick it up, all right? 
she's just great. But I have to say I don't recommend the movie. I watched the movie, it came out on Apple TV like over um, Valentine's Day, I think, and I wasn't obsessed. I just felt like the cast was kind of weak and the acting wasn't great, but the scenery was really nice and the wardrobe was fantastic. But other than that, I was just kind of like, meh. Now for everything I have been listening to. So I have currently a number one podcast that I won't shut the f up about, and I've been loving it so much. So if you guys know Shan Boudreaux, Dram Shan Booty here on YouTube. She has a podcast called Lovers and Friends where she just wants you to spark conversations with your lovers and your friends and your family or whoever about sexuality, relationships, and all of the things that fall under the spectrum of that. So she talks about everything from communication styles to bedroom things and other various stuff that I'm just like, yes, this is great. And she has had some really, really banging episodes recently. And I just love that podcast so much. Much. I'm gonna link a couple of my favorite episodes down below because there are two in particular that really just sparked a lot of conversations with my lovers and friends in my life about men and vulnerability and also just relationships and the way that they grow and change over time. And she seriously knocks it the out of the park with this podcast, okay? I love her YouTube channel, but I love the podcast even more. She's very concise. Her interviews and her interviewees are just fantastic. And I just can't get enough of it, okay? I had to share it with you because I love it so much. She's really killing it. And she's pregnant again, which I'm so excited about. Yes, love babies. The next things I've been listening to are two playlists that I've made. So now I'm kind of just into making a couple of playlists, just like listening to them on repeat and listening to albums from my favorite artists when they come out, obviously, and then just adding them to these playlists. So if you're ever like, damn, I miss Souls at Sundown. I miss your music recommendations. Remember when you used to do Smash or Pass with songs or Jam and Sesh videos in the car or whatever you want to do? Yeah, if you miss that energy, just go to my Spotify, okay? Just go to my Spotify. You can see all my playlists on there. I have a playlist right now called Very Nice. I like it. And it's just great. That's kind of like all of my bops so far of the past few months. And then I have a 2022 playlist of my favorite albums of this year. So I'll link both of those down below of what I've been jamming to. It's been a lot of Pine Grove's new album and a lot of Carrie Faux because she's an icon. And she released the deluxe version of Low Key Superstar, which has just been fantastic. She's one of my favorite female rappers. And I've also been listening to a lot of like the Mamma Mia song soundtrack, but we'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to that. Okay, now for everything that I've been watching. <laughs> so I have been watching a lot of fire TV shows, and I'm just going to talk about them all. So I had my wisdom teeth removed at the beginning of March, and I watched all of Fleabag during that time. I had never seen Fleabag before. I know, you don't have to yell at me in the comments. I loved it. It was incredible. It was one of the best shows that I've seen all year. So I just wanted to talk about it with you, and it's over. They're not going to make any more seasons, so just watch it. Just catch up. Just see it and be like, hmm, yeah. And let me know your thoughts down below because I loved it. It was raunchy, it was interesting, it was thought provoking, it was great. And speaking of thought provoking, last night I finished Minx on HBO and I originally decided to watch it because Nick from New Girl is one of the main characters, Jake Johnson is his name, and he was a stellar actor but so was everybody else. Like he's the one who got me to watch it but I stayed for everybody else. It was so good. It's basically about like a feminist nudie mag <laughs> and that's why I said it's thought provoking because they talked a lot in it about like if it can be feminist if it is a nudie mag and also the struggles that go along with trying to push that type of content out to a specific audience so they basically would like sell it and market it under the guise of hey this is like a nudie mag for women to flip through because women are sexual beings too and then the content in it like the articles and stuff would be about like very dense and rich feminist topics and it was just so interesting and well acted and the scenery and the clothing the fashion Ooh, it was fantastic. It was based in like the 1970s. So all of the outfits are just to die for. And like I said, the cast blew it out of the park. It was one of my favorite shows of this entire year. I really, really highly recommend, especially if you like Nick from New Girl, cause it was crazy to see him in a role like that. And I'm still kind of like on the fence after finishing the show about his character, but 
I'm not gonna give you any spoilers, okay? Just go watch it. And then I also finished last night, Life and Beth with Amy Schumer on Hulu. And I didn't know that she wrote this kind of about her own life and her own upbringing. So that was really interesting because I found that out after I finished the show and my sister recommended it to me and I just breezed right through it in like a week's time. Because like I said, I'm sick right now with a sinus infection. But anyways, I thought that this was an amazing cast as well. My favorite role was probably Michael Sarah as a farmer. I I'm just a fiend for Michael Sarah, honestly. I think he is so funny. It was an amazing role for him. Amy was amazing as well, and just the whole cast in general. Really, really great acting. And I just have never seen anything like this from Amy Schumer before. Like normally she's just very like funny and absurd and whatever. And like parts of the show were funny, but it was also like very serious. And she talked about like trichotillomania and a lot of other various things like that. So I kind of wanted to give a trigger warning about that because she said in an article I read last night that Hulu wouldn't let her give like a distinct warning on the episodes about tricks so I wanted to give it for you guys if you guys struggle with that and she was just kind of like opening up about her experience throughout the show and stuff and going into her childhood and all these kinds of things it was truly amazingly done like I just loved it and then lastly what I've been watching is a lot a lot of wedding movies so if you follow me on Instagram it's just at Megan Hughes I have been reviewing wedding movies on my story over the course of the past like month and a half or so and a lot of you have sent me in your recommendations recommendations of what I should watch and I've just been reviewing all of them on a scale of one to five stars and I have it all highlighted on my page on Instagram so you can go back and like look at all my reviews if you're curious but I dwindled down a top three favorite wedding movies so far and they are number one The Wedding Planner with Matthew McConaughey and JLo incredible i loved it so much my wedding planner recommended it to me and then i watched it and i was like this is one of my favorite rom-coms ever now like it was just so good and i don't know how i never saw it it came out in 2001 it was great and then my number two was probably my big fat greek wedding i had never seen it before which is truly shocking like how did i never see it growing up my parents were obsessed with that movie my mom especially but i just never watched it with her i don't know why but it was hysterical i love the aunt in that movie her entire family is just so fucking funny and I just ate it up. I loved it. It was so silly and just like fun loving and great. And then my third is kind of a wedding movie, but not really, <laughs> is Mamma Mia. And I hadn't seen Mamma Mia like since it came out. Like I don't remember the last time I watched that movie, but I watched it the other day and I am on my period right now. So I was like crying a lot, especially during slipping through my fingers. Meryl Streep, everybody. I mean, let's just give it up for her. Am I right? She's incredible. I watched it basically just for her and I was blown the hell away. I was. It's just one of the best movie musicals of all time in my opinion next to Greece and Chicago for me personally. Don't get your panties in a bunch. I know we love musicals on this channel. I was a theater kid. It's true. Um, anyways, I just love Mamma Mia. I thought that it was just like so freaking fun and silly and great but also romantic and like serious at times. You know the topics that they talked about or sang about. Yeah, I cried. I cried a lot, so I can I can say that here. I feel comfortable to say that here. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that to say, if you haven't seen Mamma Mia in a few years, I highly recommend just revisiting it, okay? Because now I've been listening to the soundtrack so much and it is truly life changing. Slipping through my fingers all the time I try. My camera cut me off there, probably for the best. <laughs> Don't need to sing in this. Anyways. <laughs> Um, that was all my stuff that I've been lobbing over the course of 2022. Thank you again to Brooklyn Inn for sponsoring this video. You can get $20 off an order of $100 or more with code Megan H. Just click the link in the description and follow on through there and go get yourself some comfy sheets, okay? I love you. I love filming these and I'm so happy that you guys still like watching them. So thanks, shout out to you. And I'll just see you in my next one. And when I'm not on YouTube, you can find me on Twitch streaming three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and also on Patreon. Patreon, uploading extra content every week. Okay, I love you. Thanks for watching. Stay smiling. Bye, y'all.